Now, we have a, a new award this year, and justifiably so, given that, for example, from Syria alone, four million refugees have fled in the last two years. This is the first year for the Refugee Reporting Award. It was launched for the 2015 awards in partnership with the British Red Cross to encourage accurate and fair reporting on refugee and asylum seeker issues. In its inaugural year, this category received more entries than any other category of the awards, highlighting the urgency and the importance of balanced media coverage. And the nominees are... Lost. Missing in the Mediterranean. Caroline Moorhead for Intelligent Life. Poverty and persecution in sub-Saharan Africa and the Middle East have driven tens of thousands of people to leave their homes and seek new lives in Europe. Caroline Moorhead spent time with families whose loved ones secretly set out across the Mediterranean with boat traffickers and vanished. On good days, Watani thinks her husband is still alive, that her mobile will ring and he will tell her he's found work in Italy or France, that he will soon be home with money to buy them a house. But now that three years have passed since he paid a trafficker to take him on a boat from Tunisia to Italy, she is less sure. She didn't know he was going, though they talked endlessly about his inability to find work and about the relentless poverty in which they lived. In this small community, there are 25 missing people, all driven by the ailing economy to take boats in the hope of finding work in Europe. Evaporating Borders, Iva Asks Films. I went to my family, Hassan, and my children to Qubros. And I went to the journey of the journey to Syria. I managed to get to the journey and get to them. In the journey of the journey, I made a visit for seven or nine months from the journey. I met the journey of the journey. I met the journey of the journey of the journey. And I had a journey of the journey of the journey. إنسان سياسي وعسكري يشتغل خلال في منظمة التحرير الفلسطينية على مدار 25 سنة واليوم بتفاجأ إنه بيرفضني هون بربع ساعة أنطاني رفض قبرص إذا هي ما بدها تأخذ لاجئين لشو تتوقع معاهدة إنه تستقبل لاجئين؟ Surviving the most lethal route in the world, BBC World Service. Nuala McGovern tells the story of one boat, two Syrian families, their desperate attempt to make it to Europe and what happened next. For 12 months, she tracked their progress as they tried to overcome the obstacles in their struggle to forge a new life. There's no space in the boat and my mommy don't even know how to swim a little bit, so how are we going to save her? We see the, the boats who come and help you to get you. They come and they take these people and they leave us. And then the last time they helped us, my mommy got on, and then my brother, yeah. and then me. And then they said, for my, mom, for my daddy, there's no space. And then we start, like, fighting. I can't, I will, won't, I will come down in the water if my daddy don't come up. He said uh, in Libya that he would, in Libya he would take them to the beach all the time and they would uh, swim and he, he goes, as soon as they reached the beach, they would literally just take off their clothes and jump into the water. They used to love the sea so much and uh, it turns out their death was in the sea. Please welcome Michael Adamson, Chief Executive at British Red Cross, to reveal the winner of the first ever Refugee Reporting Award. Well, good evening, everyone. We're very proud to be here. And um, in a way, it's rather sad that we, as the British Red Cross, are now the largest provider of support to refugees and asylum seekers in the UK, helping 14,000 people or more a year who are destitute or in desperate need of support seeking asylum, um, and simple practical emotional support to try and help them find their way around the system. And the timing of this award also couldn't be more important, um, given as UNHCR has announced this week that 60 million refugees and asylum seekers now in the world the largest numbers since the Second World War. Um, more than 40,000 people are being displaced every day, and that number has increased by four times in the last four years. Just an incredible uh, growth. And the way in which these stories are being told, as we see in a lot of the press, is simply not, uh, it's not fair, it's, it's, um, it's outrageous in, in many ways. And, and you have an incredibly important role to play in these films in actually telling stories about the dignity of people, their desire to work, um, the terrible conditions they're fleeing. 
and also to challenge this you know, toxic conflation of issues that we have in the UK at the moment around economic migration and the issues of asylum. So telling these stories well and positively uh, is incredibly important and uh, we're very pl incredibly pleased that this category um, received the largest number of, of um, applicants. It's really, really great to see the interest in it. So congratulations to all of the uh, shortlisted uh, uh, applications and the winner is uh, Evaporating Borders. Hello, I'm here on behalf of the Eva Radivojevic, uh, the director of the movie. Unfortunately, she's not here tonight with us, but she sent us the Skype video message for us, and we will going to watch it together. <laughs> Hello, London. Uh, greetings from New York. Um, although I'm very sad that I couldn't be there in person, I'm also very grateful to be able to accept this award on behalf of everybody who participated in the making of the film. Um, since we made the film, the number of people fleeing and dying at sea has actually increased. And so has the need to talk about the issue. And so thank you, One World Media, for recognizing the urgency. And we are extremely grateful to accept this award. Um, thank you. The power of the iPhone. Absolutely stunning. Uh, even quite a steady hand. But I mean, not that steady, but pretty good. <laughs>